Aquarius, it's me Stormy and here is your horoscope for January 2020 and welcome to 2020 by the way. We are going to jump in here and see what these planetary bodies, the cosmos have got going on for you this month and I want to keep something in mind, help you keep something in mind as we're coming across into 2020. You are coming across still with the actions and with the things that were happening on this cancer capricorn axis you're not coming across necessarily with something new but you're taking new actions new ideas new inventory new perspective on the old things that are coming across with you so that you can help them make some progress forward so that you can get the relief so these are things as we're here in january you've seen them you've been looking at them your your 12th house is absolutely loaded if this is about mental exhaustion emotional exhaustion things that have been hidden or have been hanging out in this closet you're cleaning it out this month because you need to have freedom on this side as you can see this transiting north node in the sixth house you've got to have your health and your wellness and your vitality so i'm telling you stuff you have already been looking at it is time to kick it out of the closet and you have help to be able to do that this month now before we jump in if you'd still like to join us for the uh, free forecast marathon talking about 2020 with 12 other astrologers on astrologyhub.com that'll be happening january 9th through the 12th you can still sign up in the description box down below okay all right aquarius let's get in here so right at the beginning of the month we see jupiter and mercury together in conjunction right here in your 12th house now jupiter is a planet of big plans big ideas but he has got a chock ton of wisdom you have got wisdom in your back pocket this is not new information to you right Mercury is the planet of the details, right? He's like, yes, I'm glad you want world peace, Jupiter, but how are we going to get that done? We need details of how we're going to get this plan done. So when Mercury and Jupiter come together, this is a tiding of good news. This is optimism. This means there's a big plan in place and you're ready to make some decisions on it. So from your 12th house space, which are all things hidden, um, things that have been... Um, we've been escaping. They are. This is the place of our own undoing. What have we been keeping back there and we haven't dealt with? Spiritual practices, spiritual literature, information, mental illnesses, um, requited love, all of those things live back over here. So with Jupiter and Mercury together, there's a big plan to set Aquarius free, but it will require your action over this month and of course the year. But these guys coming together, you're getting some ideas and wisdom is kicking in and you're like, I'm not down for a whole bunch of shenanigans. There are some things I'm ready to transition. This is the 12th house. I'm ready to let them go. I'm ready to do something different with them. Okay, so that's on the second. On the third, we've got Mars leaving his comfort zone of Scorpio and moving into the energy of Sagittarius. So this is going to light up your 11th house. Now Mars, Mars is action, energy. He's go. He's like boots on the ground. I'm actually moving and doing something here. Sagittarius is an energy that wants to give information and it wants to gather information, the gathering and sharing of information, different cultures, different people, different beliefs, different ideas, different connections. With Mars here, you're going to experiment a little with your social groups, right? Um, friends, maybe you're, you're out more, you're doing something with friends, you're getting connected, maybe you're more connected online. You could be studying something in a social group for sure. Now, Mars can also just be Mars, okay? He can be assertive, he can be aggressive. I will tell you Aquarius um, in the social world if you haven't been speaking up for yourself or your voice hasn't been big enough or you feel like no matter what you've been doing you're not being seen and able to move forward Mars is a helper to you there because he'll bring you enough assertion and aggression to kind of put yourself out there a little bit more and if you do it without running other people over it's a wonderful energy right it's good for updating those social profiles and all of that good stuff now if there does need to be a little bit of a fallout happening with friends or some kind of social group that you're connected with mars will bring that to the table and it is about airing it and cleaning it out in this area which is all of what you're about over this next year okay all right as we get to the eighth jupiter and this transiting south node are going to conjunct before we get to this saturn pluto conjunction before we get to this lunar eclipse now with these two coming into conjunction with each other why we care about them is because this is a reflection of the past jupiter is pure wisdom 
pure, pure wisdom. The south node has been saying, hey, look, we've got some enemies here. We've got things that are zapping our energy. We've got things that are zapping our um, ability to move and be in the flow of life and in the world. Maybe our emotions are catching us up. Maybe we've been in a place where we're escaping a little bit more than we need to be. We've got this work or these plans back here and we haven't been taking advantage of them. So that south note is saying, I need you to detach from this and instead grow into bringing something healthy into our daily routine. So with Jupiter and this node, this is a reflection day on the 8th and the 9th of January. Reflect on the past. What are you ready to let go of? What are you ready to step into so that as we move towards this um, north node work, you're able to do that. But you've got to reflect on the history of what you've got going on so that you don't stay in it or do it again, right? Now, when we do get to the 10th, we're going to have this full moon lunar eclipse happening over here at 20 degrees of Cancer lighting up your sixth house space. Now this is still our full moon for the month, so it says something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So we do need to make a shift here. But instead of lasting for four weeks, this is the shift that's gonna last for six months for you, okay? So whatever changes you have been brought abreast of, whatever information you have learned from this 12th house over here, in the lunation here over the next six months, it's gonna help you grow towards empowering this area, your daily routine. You are an air sign, you're thinking. How mentally exhausted have you been making yourself about something? Where would you like to just free up some mental space and explore something in a daily routine, right? Your health, your wellness, all of these things get empowered by what you're finding out over here, okay? Now, on the 11th, we've got two things happening for this particular timing. First, we've got Uranus, who's down here in Taurus, coming out of retrograde. So he's going to be ready for forward motion down here in your fourth house zone, okay? Uranus has been retrograde since 2019. So when Uranus is working somewhere for you, he's going to come. He brings some excitement, some instability. He says, ooh, these structures, these ideas, these beliefs, this whatever you've had here worked for a very long time, and it's not going to work anymore. So he starts busting the frame out. And he's like, we need to innovate here. We need to innovate. We need new ideas so that the future Aquarius can move forward and be well suited for the future that's coming. Now, this is your ruling planet. So this also tells me in the fourth house, one of the things it's resetting is your emotional security and your emotional foundation. I mean, truly, this has brought a level probably for you, all of you, regardless of if you feel like 2019 was successful and the best or the worst, whichever, I feel like this has brought a change to your emotional security and how you deal and how you move with that, which again can be in response to what you're doing over here, right? How do we, how do we make this solid? How do we take this to the next level to have some good meditation, have some good cleaning out of the things that zap our energy. Now the other thing that's going to happen as Uranus is now direct is he's going to show you and help you understand which things in your fourth house, home, family, real estate, property, which things do you need to keep and which things do you need to change. Um, there's going to be a little dance that happens here at the end of the month. Uh, with maybe a family member because Mars is going to get involved. And I will tell you, if you've got family members, if you've got friends, if you've got family connections that have been zapping you, if you've been working on the same house for a long time and it's zapping you, that may bring an ending of some variety to your table. But the other thing is this may encourage you, Aquarius, to use those highly intellectual air skills and start learning about investing in property, in real estate, in food. Where can you make your advancements in those particular industries. Now, the other thing that's gonna happen on the 11th or 12th, just depending on where you are, is the Saturn and Pluto conjunction that is happening here. Okay, this is happening in your 12th house. So I'm telling you, with Saturn and Pluto, because it's such a slow evolutionary change, it can feel like loss, or it can kind of feel like the universe is pulling something out from underneath you. And what's happening is it's saying this can't stay here anymore. Remember, with Pluto, we've got to evolve. We've got to die off in one way so we can live healthfully in another. And Saturn is going to help us advance and achieve in this particular area. He's crystallizing lessons over here for us. So one of the things I think truly in the 12th house, you know, if, if you've really just got things you're holding on to from the past, 
you're not going to be able to hold on to them for too much longer because across the street it's making you tired or it just does not fit the daily routine it doesn't fit the health it's not really truly a position where you're able to be of service to other people and that's a big deal for you to be able to be and have a position in this world where you get to be of service to other people and kind of lead them that's important to you so if you've got stuff going on that's keeping this in your way you will uh, you'll clear it out of the way to be able to make this happen now what that Saturn Pluto can feel like is loss and if it does feel like loss the rest of your placements are saying hey we've got new friends or social groups that'll help us learn how to bring this area up so that we can succeed over here um, as we get to the 13th of the month, Venus is going to move on out of your sign and move into your second house. So there will also be some value brought to the table. Maybe there's some money to study something else, right? Or maybe you have a disconnect from someone in your family or something that's been holding you down. And it lets you see that you have additional resources that are actually available to you. Perhaps there are resources available to you by joining an organization of some variety or a grouping in some way, shape, or form. And value doesn't always have to be money. Sometimes the value can be that it brings you information you didn't have before that shifts your perspective so much that it shows you what else you can release here, okay? On the 16th, we see Mercury leaving. We see the sun leaving this Capricorn energy and Mercury's moving into your sign. The sun is moving into your sign. And then right behind that, we've got a new moon happening. All of this in your sign. Now, this is beautiful. This is happy news. Mercury coming into your sign is very original thinking, original ideas, um, pushing the limits even a little bit. You're a little bit more of a risk taker when Mercury's here. So your thinking is expanded, right? It's a beautiful perspective. And with this new New moon being here you plant these seeds of intention at this new moon Aquarius as to where you're ready to move forward in this next year right this is birthday time so happy happy birthday and what do you want for this next year where are you willing to team up with some groupings or associations of people where are you willing to have a different routine that you can show up to and put yourself out there a little bit different where is it not so entirely important that you be highly independent, but that you become a little bit interdependent, which therefore gives you a sense of independence, right? Where can you reevaluate these things? But what do you want for your next birthday year? You plant those seeds of intention at this particular moon, and remember that the moon and the sun create that new moon, but the sun is giving you the motivation and the energy if you feel like other things have been moving slowly or kind of emotionally getting to you, okay? So those are helpers as well. Two dates I want to give you for the end of the month, and I'll get you out of here. All right, the 27th. We've got Venus and Neptune who are going to come together in a conjunction. I love them. They are the Bopsy twins. It's so good, so creative. This can be very, very good for creativity around your money, your skills, your self-esteem. You're very accepting. You're very loving of yourself, right? It's a wonderfully delicious energy, and I would tell you, get into that. Get your fingers all pruny in that if you just need a little bit of self-love going on. What this is not great for is making big financial decisions because these two are making it look better than it it is they are giving you some rose colored glasses so I would wait now on the 28th Mars is going to square this Neptune right so this is the 11th house so maybe what's happened is you're a part of a social grouping or something like that and Mars is saying oh no you're not about to spend our money no 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 you don't have all the facts hold on a minute let's make sure we have all of the facts and all of the information before we spend our money before you give up your self-esteem before we cash our value but the square will put you under enough pressure to use this particular part of your chart to examine the information that you have if you examine information and you still want to make the investment you examine the information you still want to have the connection go forth with it but ultimately before you do something wrong Mars is stepping in to say wait a minute this might not be as clear as we need to be today to make that decision, okay? All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I hope you have an absolutely brilliant birthday time. I look forward to walking with you every week and every month of this year. So I'll see you very, very soon, okay? Bye, Aquarius.